Here we go. We're about to go. Surprise, Lighthouse Sounds. Alex and Hart, great startup. Yeah. They have no idea we're coming. This is going to be awesome. Maybe we can drop a track while we're in there. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, what's happening? We're here to tell you you're one of the six businesses. You guys are in. Wow. Big news. Oh, I was so nervous. I'm so excited for you guys. Are you going to record some stuff with us? Let's yeah, rock yeah, this. Yeah. Here you go. yeah, man. And we're inside Lighthouse Sounds right now. And if you don't record your next album here, your album's probably gonna suck. <laughs> Go to lighthousesounds.com. Do it. Small towns across the country are fighting for their survival with the odds stacked against them. But what happens if we join that fight? If we dedicate a little money, a lot of experience, and thousands of hours of work into one small town, focusing on the businesses that are the heart of their main street. What started as an idea became a national movement with over 30,000 towns nominated for the $500,000 makeover and more than a million votes cast for the winner. Good evening, Alton, Illinois. How is everybody tonight? Now, in our third season, the team is taking on its biggest challenge ever. The town is three times bigger than any we've helped before and the hurdles Alton faces will put to the test the very idea of Main Street America. So Amanda Brinkman and her team of marketing experts at Deluxe are going to work for the people of Alton, Illinois. And they're not alone. New season three co-host Ty Pennington will be working with the team to rehabilitate the town's buildings while a whole cast of experts helps rehabilitate its businesses. Every episode, we'll be working with a new small business to see if we can change the odds, if together we can start a revolution. This is what I've wanted to do my entire life, you know, since I was 10 years old. Ever since then, I've wanted to be an audio engineer. It's, it's great to just love your job and love your life. My role is just recording and mixing and mastering. Me and Hart, we've known each other since, what, middle school? Hart's dad was my football coach. I, uh, you know, I have no real musical inclination or talent, but I wanted to start a business just a place you can call your own. I have to thank my dad for my work ethic when he passed away. My dad left me a little bit of money, then I wanted to do something for my future. You know, I want to have something accomplished and, you know, match my name with success. And that, in turn, means Alex is going to be successful too because we started this together. Once Lighthouse started having success, so did the bands in Alton. Lighthouse has really been able to propel a lot of the bands forward by being at the heart of the Alton music scene. Alex has tons of experience making it sound really good, but not overproducing it. A lot of these bands wouldn't have a resource to record at, you know, the deals we cut. We're like, come on in, let's get this record done. Alex does the day-to-day -day operations of the studio, and I'm still just learning. You know, in the future, I would like to start doing that kind of stuff. But as of right now, I do all the accounting and I just pay for everything. Yeah. <laughs> we knew we were going to be losing money yeah. for the first couple years. I mean, you know, it's one client at a time. It wasn't plausible to be profitable at all. It's been a lot, a lot of stress, you know. If we do something stupid and spend money on something we shouldn't, that can make or break, you know, so that's why we bicker about the slightest things. We're always going at it. We're like an old married couple. Right. For sure. We fight quite a bit. All like the time. Too. Constantly. He always wants me to buy him stuff. <laughs> See, old married couple right there. Even though our business was doing good, spent so much money here in rent and wasn't making any back, we were going to close if we didn't find a building. We just had to figure something out. We were just driving on Broadway, and we saw that fireplace building. I was able to use my savings and purchase it. So we have no mortgage. We have nothing on it. Anyway, we're excited to have you guys across the street. And all that we're stuff. excited to be across the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank Thank you. You. But there's just so much to worry about. There's a thousand different things that could happen. And we spent 100 grand total probably between investment and it could all go to nothing yeah. if it doesn't work out. I've always been a glass half full person in hearts like a there is no glass, the glass is broken on the floor type person, so. <laughs> yeah, I want to look negative upon it sometimes, but you really can't do that. I want to get this done, make it the most awesome studio we can. It could be our future for the rest of our lives.
Between the business and the building, Hart and Alex have taken on a lot of risk. But the upside is huge. A renowned recording studio can pull in artists from literally all over the world. And we've got the marketing and branding power to raise them to that level. We've also brought in experts whose work is truly world-class. Juanita Copeland is president and general manager of Sound & Print, one of Nashville's most prestigious recording studios, with credits from Johnny Cash to Alabama Shakes. And she's brought along chief engineer Mike Stankiewicz to help talk tech. We chose Hart & Alex for their combination of raw artistic talent and exceptional work ethic. Adding expertise to that equation could truly put them on the map. Hey, good morning, hey. guys. Hello. Hi. How are you? This is Juanita. Hi, Hi. Hart, nice, nice to meet you. you. Hi. Alex. Hi, Alex. You. So nice to meet this you. This is Mike. All right, so show us around. So you've gutted the whole, what was here before? A uh, fireplace store. OK. As you can see from the few stove pipes and chimneys that are left going up. The whole building's about 4,800 square feet. Upstairs, we're gutting, and we're not going to have that finished for the actual um, opening of this part. And this is going to be our retail over here. And you haven't thought any about a reception area or having anyone? We're really not, not on that scale. Yeah. You know, we aren't. But the office space do. for the retail area could be a good, you know, kind of area for that as well. When are you guys planning to have this construction finished? We're hoping for June, yep. but fingers yep. crossed. I'd love to sit down and talk a little bit about the staged plans that you have and the current business model and get one of these slides on board. Definitely. For sure. Absolutely. We're heading down the block to the current studio to talk layout. We're not diving right in, though, because Lighthouse Sounds has a lot of toys. So we've got our Thurman here. Um, we've got a lot of weird stuff in the studio, and this is one of our, our favorites, so. OK, you want to try it? Sure. OK, so. What major songs use a Thurman? Uh, Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. Horror films will use Thurmans a lot. Oh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> I didn't even know that would do anything. <laughs> Feels like something the higher you raise your hand, the louder it'll get. Oh, cool. oh my God. <laughs> there you go. So tell us a little bit about how you're planning to kind of roll out the business and how you're thinking about it. Um, well, right now it's just a matter of getting the, the studio area done so we can, you know, get in that, that new space and start being profitable. It'd be great to have, you know, other options in the studio that we're making multiple forms of income. The retail shop will kind of go hand in hand with the studio part because there's nowhere around here where somebody can get local brand merchandise or anything. So what is the best way to think through the revenue model of the studio? I mean, what, is, what really is your product? It's the time, right? It's the time. Absolutely. It's, it's no time. different than renting a hotel room, but you're renting it to make art. I would take that area that you guys are calling a retail space, mm -hmm. and I would make that another room. That will bring you more revenue, in my opinion, than a shop that you can put upstairs. Mm -hmm. All that space should be utilized to make music. Mm -hmm. But I also think you very much need a reception area. So much of what we do is it's client services. It is taking care of people. Being in the studio world, there's a four-letter word called vibe. <laughs> yeah. I've heard you guys use that as well. Yeah. For sure. Every studio has gear. Every studio has staff. But vibe is something you cannot buy. Yeah. You create it. But ideally, you've got an awesome console that everybody mm -hmm. wants to use. And a bunch of outboard options for EQs, compressors, yeah. all that stuff. Some people are more gear-minded. Mm -hmm. Others are more vibe-minded. Yeah, definitely. But if you can sort of meet in the middle and have enough of each of those, then it'll be win-win. Yeah. Tell me how you're feeling about the, the things we're sharing. I mean, I uh, agree with most of it, but I want to be able to work in the retail spot because I don't know how to do what he does here, you know, or record a session. So I can't really come work at my own business. The but only you can be me. It is music business. It is a business. You will be the prime business part of it. And then the creative part goes to him. That's exactly how the Sound Emporium has been set up. And that is how we have thrived and how we have been the busiest studio in Nashville. I mean, it's kind of scary, you know, that the whole, our whole plan has been flipped around a little bit, but I mean, they can find a way to apply that to me being involved more than I'm more than happy to do that. Because I want to be able to come work at my own business. Strengthening this business will do more than just put Hart and Alex in a better place. The new building is located in a growing arts district on East Broadway. And that's important for two reasons. First, businesses like Lighthouse and Jacoby's Art Center across the street are repurposing old industrial buildings that have been vacant for years. And second, the cultural impact of arts businesses like this one in a town this size is immeasurable. What I love about Lighthouse Sounds is these guys 
they want to stick it out in their town in, in, in Alton. In small towns, a lot of times these people that want to play music and be in bands, they leave because they think that there's no outlet for them there. You know, these are dreams, man. And sometimes those dreams lay in the balance of somebody who cares about your talent. Local musicians are already invested in Lighthouse's success. It's our job to reach everybody else. And that means giving these guys a public face that measures up to their talent. So let's talk a little bit about attracting new customers. Who handles your website and your social media? A little um, bit of all of us. We yeah. built it whenever we first opened, just kind of been adding stuff to mm -hmm. it. Okay. We need to do a kind of an overhaul and yeah. fix a couple things, but... One of the things we love is this video, this drone shot of Alton. Mm -hmm. It's awesome, but we want to think through when people mm -hmm. are looking for studio spaces, what they're coming to your site to do and how you want to kind of take them through that discovery journey of who you are. Because that's yeah. where we're going to tell your story. That's where we're going to communicate your vibe mm -hmm. and your brand. We're going to have your logo and how they then book with you. We would make sure oh, that the word recording studio is not only in the tags on your page, but is littered throughout the site mm -hmm. so that, you know, when the search engines are crawling for those keywords, mm -hmm. you're popping up. Search is the name of the game when it comes to the online yeah. space because it's, it's the fun. majority of how everyone finds businesses. We do it, right? Like if you Google just Lighthouse Sounds, because I felt like I tried that. And maybe yeah, we, it was we had a hard lower. time finding you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about studio operations, best practices, business structure, what we really want to focus on from a studio perspective. Maybe something that could be helpful it's almost writing a job description for Hart. So we're clear on Absolutely. the best practices between what should the lead engineer be doing versus the business manager. Absolutely. Well, the first thing is that you have to wear several hats. You're going to be the engineer, but you're probably also going to be the technical expert. And you may have to do some light gear repair. And you are going to have to be the face of the marketing, of the, I don't know how much accounting experience you have, but... You're gonna need to do that. And I had to learn every bit of it. The little details matter. I agree there's a lot of little things we could do, like like the book work, that you know how badly that frustrates Yeah, me. what he's saying more or less is like, I can be bad about, you know, entering stuff in QuickBooks at the end of every day or, you and know, that just makes little. things harder for and me. And it does. But you, know, you should be the one doing that, not you. That's not acceptable. Yeah. And I would get you if you were at my studio. Yeah. But, See, I'm nicer yeah. than you and you, I need to start getting people. That's right. <laughs> Put that foot down. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the business structure. Give Juanita a sense for kind of how you structured the business. Alex does 1099 independent contractor work okay. is how we do it now, so I don't have to have payroll in because he's the only, you know, the only one. But eventually you will need other engineers. Yeah, that's true. Because I, in the past month, actually, I just got a job with Vintage King. Okay. Is it distracting you, though, from your current job at Late Hill um, Sounds? No. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. It's not It's not taking me away from anything thus far. I don't know. You're leaving for some... two weeks. Yes, I am leaving for two weeks. Right. That's the only time I'm going right. to have to leave. When you look before that, there's a ton of sessions. You look after that, there's a ton of sessions. In that period, there's none because we don't have anybody else yeah. right now. And what, what are you leaving for? Is it training, training or something? Yeah. Well, I even before I knew about this, I was nervous that you guys didn't have another engineer because you can't have that... That is a kiss of death. Yeah. Two weeks with no income, kiss of death. So I am curious kind of how decision making and things like that happen. Is it you because of the ownership of the business or are you trying to make all these decisions equally? Me and him are partners, but everything in the corporation's all under my name. So if everything's in Hart's name, in what way are you guys actually partners? Does that make sense? No, yeah, don't ask that question. <laughs> um, we're, I mean, Al, there, I mean, the, the best way I think to put it is there wouldn't be a studio without either one of us. On paper, it's Hart's business, yeah, it's, but in and, reality, it's the two of us. You know? Yeah, a lot of equipment is his. He invests a lot of the money he makes back to gear for the studio. Right, so his part of the partnership is the gear and the services. Mm -hmm. The gear technically is an asset of the business, yes. even if Alex is, is buying it. How do, if uh, we sold Lighthouse Sounds yeah. to someone and they offered us whatever, a bunch of money, yeah. And I offer you some, you're going to leave your gear. Oh, yeah. The gear is part of an asset. If it you is offer a fixed him asset. some, but as of right now, the way it's set up legally. That is yeah. that is where it can get scary because it's messy. It, your, your friends now, it is just healthier and easier now to have very clear-cut lines of ownership because right now you are the one with the business risk. Yeah, if you don't think Juanita and I have ever had to go through any of those kind of simple <laughs> things, then you'd be mistaken. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, I know the feeling. <laughs> I've been through a lot. You don't have to bring yours up, though, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs>
It is hard to mix friendships and business, family and business, uh, yet a lot of people go into business with their friends and their family. It's kind of difficult talking through that stuff because it is hard to trust. You know, that's a lot of money of mine that's been put towards someone else, so. They can have a partnership till the cows come home, but the buck stops with Hart, and he's gonna have to take a more forceful role as a leader for it to work. Between 1969 and 1979, Aretha Franklin, Paul Simon, Willie Nelson, and the Rolling Stones all recorded in a tiny studio in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And if we play this right, Alex and Hart could bring big artists from all over the country to make music in Alton, Illinois. But to get there, Lighthouse is going to have to take some huge leaps forward in every facet of their business. Hart and Alex will continue construction on the new space, but Deluxe has local contractors on standby, ready to hire, in case the guys need help with the build-out. Because we're going to be asking a lot of them over the next few months. Juanita and Mike are going to continue to work with Alex and Hart, shoring up operations and filling out the gear list, while the Deluxe marketing team collaborates with them on rebranding the business as a destination recording studio. Lighthouse sounds it's about to make a big move into a new studio space. So the key will be to ratchet up that brand, that look, that feel that the big bands really consider them. If we're trying to reach artists outside of all, their first impression of Lighthouse sounds is going to be the website. So that's where we start. Over and over I heard from their interviews, like, we don't want to be sterile. We don't want to be sterile, but their website is really sterile. Hopefully we can address that through photos, kind of like those photos from studios that you'd see, like, you know, rock journalists take. While we focus on website vibe, Hart's hustling to keep the construction schedule on track. And Mike's across town working with Alex on the other key ingredient to any recording studio, the gear. Upgrade just a little to some stuff that's a little more recognizable to the clients. Alex obviously wants a bunch of gear, but once you're kind of running and operating and you have income to reinvest, that's where you can start slowly over time adding new gear. It'll just be a slow process, it'll take time. The gear upgrades might be a long run, but the guys are putting together some of the other key pieces of the puzzle even faster than we had hoped. We've been lucky enough to bring some new guys on our team. I remember Juanita saying that, you know, you need more engineers, and I was like, okay, I'll try. And, you know, now we've got four people in the last, it just really makes my heart sing to hear that you've got them up and running. It's amazing how Hart and Alex are putting all of these ideas into practice. But we've got to make sure the transition into a bigger staff runs smoothly. We can put all your employees on direct deposit. It makes it very simple. So as your business grows, we're going to be able to grow with you. You're not going to have to worry about tax payments or anything else. Organizing payroll may not be the sexiest part of running a business, but it's a lot sexier than getting hit with a tax penalty happens to over 40% of small businesses every year. And right now, Hart and Alex can't afford to have it happen to them. I think we need some vital information for the newer guys. Yeah. A lot of the engineers have their own unique qualities, um, so we try to depict that in their biographies. All of these engineers are musicians. They actually play, they actually perform, so they know what it takes. New building, new staff, new brand. None of it matters if the partnership isn't strong. And the time to take care of that is now, before the business really starts to take off. In the best situation from your perspective, what is the value that you've brought into the organization, all the percentages and things of that sort? Just the reputation I've built for us alone, I think 25 is fair. 10% is what I feel comfortable with. I mean, and that's me being nice. With the revenue I've brought in, I believe I've created the value for the business. We started the studio together. Right, but with my, because you had no initial investment except for a couple things from your house. Without that, there would be no space to create a value. You've actually gotten to put money in your pocket. I have not. If I could actually give myself a paycheck, and if we started making money. Where we're about to, you know. We're about to. Yeah, exactly. About so I don't to wanna... nothing. I want to see my, this business be successful before I give that much away. You know, it could be in the future that when things are starting to get better, we would need to set up some parameters of this is how we are testing success. And we're right, these to... are the things that if these happen, then the percentage goes up to 25% or Correct. something like that. I'm not opposed in the future, depending on what happens, changing that. Right. Hart put in the most time, the most money, the most effort. So whatever ownership I would take, um, you know, I want Hart to get his investment back before, you know, I would see any sort of benefit. I want ben, us to be happy and have a great, you know, I want this to work. You know, the structure of the business is starting to take shape. 
But with all of the demands on Hart's time, the build-out is falling behind. So we're calling in the local contractors to make sure Hart doesn't have to finish the new space alone. Yeah, well, this is one of the hardest things we've had to do with any of the businesses. It's a massive space, and being able to get it done in the time that they've wanted to do it has been the challenge. You know, we're helping them with the design of the front area, you know, putting new windows in, getting a really cool retro-looking uh, sign based on their new logo. They were very tied to that lighthouse. They didn't want to abandon that. So we came up with several options. We are having a lot of fun exploring logos, so we presented more than just three to them, which is normally what we would present. With all the work Hart and Alex are doing shaping the new space, we want the guys to see a world-class studio in action. So we booked them a trip to Nashville, where Juanita and Mike arranged for a private tour of the legendary Sound Emporium. Just their gear selection is insane. Like vintage and new, and it's just amazing. So yeah, yeah. I'm like a kid in a candy shop here. You know, he's been looking at gear. I've been looking at designs and the way they have stuff. It's and just- Everything is so homey in here. Like, and it's like very the, comfortable. In the lounge, in the lobby, I, get a, I see what they're talking about, how that's a very important part of the studio. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah awesome. uh, that's our mic locker. So many ideas coming to my head now. Good. That was the purpose. We wanted to inspire you. Well, I'm glad you got it. <laughs> now my layout's going to be a little different than we had talked about. We can do it bigger than I had imagined before. The ultimate goal is to get people to book a tour, come look at our studio, come check it out. So we actually decided to put four plans onto the website so that when people do go visit it, it's going to feel like home. We did find out that people, you know, basically lived there for nine months in and out recording an album. Yeah, you want to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And right on the heels of the Nashville tour, Juanita really pulled a rabbit out of her hat. I heard um, you have some good news. Yeah, our broker found an amazing console that is going to be a game changer for them. And it is less than half the cost of what they would have found anything for online. We're so excited. It is a big deal. Just gonna kind of put us on a different level than we were before. You see this ma massive console in there that looks legit. It just gives it that wow factor that we, we didn't have. Well, this is great because the new console can go in the larger studio, and then they yeah. will now have a smaller studio as well. Yeah, and it allows us to spend our budget on the things that they need in terms of exactly. infrastructure. The exposed brick looks so good. Because I play music too, like this really excites me. I'm so stoked for you. I'm, I'm so excited. Oh, I, I bet. How much time do you think this has saved you? The framing that Deluxe had to do for us, it would have taken me by myself probably three weeks. So you got new windows, right? Yes, sir. I got new front windows. This would have this would have been very hard for me to do myself. Absolutely. Actually helped us move towards getting ready to open and where we need to be. You want me to make a couple cuts? You want to slap up some wood? Yes, sir. And then just get a few things done? So I've had a lot of experience building things. I've also renovated a lot of old warehouses. There's something about going into an old building, but now it's got a new life and seeing new studs going up, that is the elation of like, this place is gonna be insane. In spite of everyone's hard work, the building is still a couple of months from completion, but the rest of the Lighthouse Sounds makeover is dialed in and ready for the big move, including a pretty big surprise that we've been conspiring with Jensen Fabrication to design and sneak into the new space. So after months of long distance collaboration, the band is getting back together one last time to launch Lighthouse 2.0, Alton's world-class recording studio. So let's uh, go back in time and talk about your existing logos. Mm -hmm. So you had kind of two of them out there. We just really wanted to be very clear that this is a music company. And so we worked with you on developing your new logo. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Love that. I love that. We still held on to the lighthouse, but by adding kind of this uh, really great vinyl record look, it communicates music right away. Yeah, yes. I love the font, and I'm really glad that you guys could incorporate the uh, original design because I was super adamant about that. Um, all right, so one of the tests of a great logo is to see what it looks like on a hat. Oh, Very nice. Wow. Awesome. That is awesome. And then this one is probably my favorite, oh, custom wow. guitar picks. That's that is, awesome. I love that. We thought it would be really fun to make coasters. Those are amazing. Just having your brand around your own space yeah. makes a business mm -hmm. feel so professional. Uh, postcards can be a really great way to talk about the fact that you've moved. What the Small Business Revolution has done for Lighthouse Sounds, you kind of handed them this awesome, here you're going to succeed package, and that's immeasurable. They 100% are going to excel at this. Okay, are you guys ready to see your new website? Mm -hmm. I okay, am. here's your new site. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. 
Wow. That mm. is great. That looks awesome. I love the color scheme. I love the layout. Like, it's a lot better than anything I could have ever imagined. We right away want to draw out the booking as a button in itself to really make booking very clear. It adds kind of a call to action uh, to really encourage people if they want to, they can come in and take a look. And then by just adding oh, some I personality and photography to it, it really personalizes it. It doesn't feel like you're just filling out a booking form. It feels like you are communicating mm -hmm. and developing a relationship yeah, already. Definitely. And then right away we want to get into About Us. So this is where we're going to use the high quality video. Great. So it's still right there mm -hmm. on um, your homepage, but it has a little bit of context to it, right? We've added words. We've added things that will help with search. We've added it as a clickable video versus an automatically playing one so that the user can decide when they want to engage with the video rather than the, the website deciding it for them. So did you guys build in, like if someone is searching for St. Louis area recording studios, will it grab them? Yes. In a sub page, we definitely built in other words that could potentially play into how people would search for your business. It really does help to build a website from a search mentality. Um, okay, so then we want to make sure that we get to know the team right away, a little bit of their history, their experience, why they love music. Right away by introducing the team, you put a face to the business. And they will go to your website and, and they'll walk in the door and say, oh, I recognize you from the website. Yeah, yeah. So it does happen. Let's look at the studios page. So we've got a studio floor plan so people can get a sense for what each of the rooms and studios are best used for. And then again, uh, another option to you know, book a Love studio it. tour or call. Where it's as many times as possible trying mm -hmm. to, you know, hammer that home. That's right. Yeah. Now let's get to the gear page. Artists will search and producers will search based on what kind of gear you have. Yeah, and so definitely. we wanted to make sure that your gear list um, was crawlable by a search engine. We want to make sure it is listed on your site as keywords. And this will be somewhere that you're going to want to be constantly updating as you're adding yeah. new and new gear. Every, every single thing, it's always an immediate, I send it to our web guy and yeah. update We've got right like away. 10 new mics in the last week, so we need to Well, there you go. Then <laughs> yeah, keeping it updated is really important. You guys have been doing a really great job with social media. This is an automatic feed from your Instagram so that you aren't having to refresh your website constantly with new photography. Any solution where you just have to post something one yeah, time yeah, and it can nice. <laughs> uh, work in multiple places. And then we've got the watch and listen. So this is your opportunity to talk about past video sessions, past clients. It's kind of your, your book of, of work. It links right to your YouTube channel as well as your SoundCloud. This is just above and beyond yeah. what we could even imagine. This website is head and shoulders above the competition in this area. Yeah, I've seen 100%. it. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that you're gonna be stealing some some of the clients from over the water. <laughs> I've seen a lot of studio websites and you know, that's, a, that's right up there. I mean, our website was okay, but it was definitely lacking a lot of things. And the new site looks phenomenal. So I feel like that's gonna take us you know, to a new level as well. Everything about this is just on a whole different scale and level than it could have been. Last time we were here, you were kind of working out your structure and how the partnership was working. Uh, so we talked with a lawyer the other day. We figured out a percentage and we're setting stipulations for those percentages to change as the business grows. So his gear is now part of the business as well. That's cool. part of his buy-in. That right. sounds like a good move. Well, that's the smart way to do it because it's clear defined lines and you don't have that gray area where it can actually yeah. ruin relationships. All right, well, I'm so excited about all these different marketing pieces, and I can't wait to see the progress on the new building. Should we go check it out? Check yes, it out. let's do it. Yeah. All right, so from the very beginning, Juanita and Mike have been advising you that it's really important that your lobby communicates that great customer experience right away. And obviously, you have to use your imagination because you're still building out the walls. Um, but we wanted to you know, get you either start for your furniture uh, so you can get a sense for how cool that modern vintage vibe will feel actually in the space. Definitely. Your reception area, it's the heart of your business. Yeah. This looks amazing and it's going to be even better when it's all done. Oh yeah, it's, you can see what it's yeah. gonna be. Juanita, for her to be as supportive as she was, that's, that really means a lot. You know, because they went above and beyond. We're so honored to be a part of this with you. You've taken every bit of advice that you've been given and put it into action. The pace of this process that we go through with businesses for this show is, is unbelievable and you guys have just really stepped up. All right, so we have one more surprise for you. This was made right here in Alton by Jensen Fabrication. They did a beautiful job. You ready to see it? Uh-huh. This is where your history begins. It's right here. Right. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Wow. That's gnarly. <laughs> incredible. A recording studio is making art. The fact that they take that seriously and they're creating a space that people are going to want to come and, and create that art is incredible. I would love to make a record here. 
they're literally putting their sweat and their tears into building their dream. The fact that we could sort of help spark that and launch that is phenomenal. Every time you watch a movie, or read a book, or listen to an album, you are watching the work of hundreds of people, the vast majority of whom never end up with their face on a billboard or an album cover. They put in the hours, often long and thankless, simply for the love of the art. It's the gift that artists and the business people that stand behind them give to the rest of us. And it's been an honor to help Alex and Hart chase that dream. I think his dad would be super proud of what we've done, for sure. So. On the season finale of Small Business Revolution Main Street. It's awesome in Alton. The entire team descends on Alton, Illinois, hoping to finish the town's makeover before the closing event. Do we feel like we can get this done in time? Hmm. But bringing the town together will challenge their very definition of Main Street America. Everything takes time, and you don't know what you don't know. If you knew that this is a special and beautiful place, and it could be better. It's about wanting to help one another because that's what a community is. Don't miss the finale event on the next episode of Small Business Revolution Main Street. Hart and Alex have the potential to run a nationally known recording studio, but building a reputation in a small town isn't easy. Visit deluxe.com backslash lighthouse sounds to learn more about how the deluxe team amped up their brand presence to make lighthouse sounds a beacon to musicians near and far.